The Revolver. It's been around for quite some time, and some say their time is long past. I beg to differ, and let me tell you why. Hey, Scallywags, welcome to another episode of our podcast, A Pirate Talks Guns. I'm your host, John Sello. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show. Happy New Year, everyone, and thank you for listening. Today, I'm going to take an unpopular position and defend revolvers. To hear it, revolvers have been relegated to the guns of boomers and fuds, and other than their nostalgic value, they've really outlived their usefulness. This couldn't be further from the truth. The revolver has a long, storied past. Hans Stopler, a German inventor, is credited with making the first functional revolver way back in 1597. Now, Stopler's revolver was a flintlock contraption that resembled modern revolvers only in its cylinder. It was operable, but impractical for carrier defense. Francesco Antonio Bracu, an Italian inventor, produced the first real viable revolver in 1833. Bracu didn't patent his revolver, and to this day, there is much argument about whether Sam Colt stole and patented Bracco's design in 1836. So revolvers have been around in varying stages of development for over 400 years. A cased ammunition replacing the cap and ball went a long way in making the revolver a viable tool. Improvements in machine tools and techniques developed over the next 100 plus years directly affected the development of the revolver resulting in the creation of some of the smoothest operating, accurate handguns ever produced. If you've never experienced the buttery smoothness of a Colt Python trigger, the originals, not, not the new ones, you've missed out on one of the pure joys of being a shooter. Simple, rugged, and reliable. These were the revolver's selling points. They served, and continue to serve, citizens, law enforcement, and bad guys well. But they had their drawbacks. They only held six rounds. Now, when everyone had a revolver, this really wasn't a drawback. The playing field was even. Enter the auto pistol. Now, you could be facing an opponent with eight, ten, or twenty rounds on tap at their disposal. Add a second opponent similarly armed, and the six rounds in your revolver suddenly seemed a rather anemic number. Now, personally, I've never went to or have been engaged in a gunfight where I thought to myself, you know, I have way too much ammo. So that six-shooter has a drawback, right? After all, the Miami shootout is what prompted the FBI to move to semi-auto guns. And while more ammo is always a good thing, I don't feel undergunned carrying a revolver. It still comes down to side alignment and trigger squeeze to put the rounds where they need to go. You just may have to reload more often. And the reloads are a little slower. And you also have to carry a bit more around with you, like speed loaders and speed strips. Now I confess, there are times when I carry a revolver as my concealed carry weapon. My state gun laws being what they are, there are certain establishments that I can't just carry into. And while I don't do business with places that have a no concealed carry sign displayed, there are places like the post office that I have no choice but to go into. So going to check my P.O. box, the gun has to stay in the vehicle. This means unloading it, as I have no desire to be shot by my own gun should someone break into the truck and get into the lock box. Now repeatedly chambering an auto pistol round can damage it by driving the bullet deeper into the case, things of that nature. And defensive ammo isn't cheap. So this means that loading and unloading it really isn't a viable option. A revolver doesn't have this problem. So I unload it, the rounds get put in a speed loader, the gun gets stowed. My errand is run, the gun gets reloaded. I make all my gun unfriendly stops in one trip and call it a day. Let's take a quick break here while I tell you about Locklore Photo. We'll be back shortly. Hey Anderson area, are you a realtor wanting to showcase your properties with video? 
having a wedding or other special event you need photos of? Need a voiceover for commercials or your office phone system? If you're in the Anderson area, look no further than the Lock Lore Production Group. This full-service audio and video production company has the tools and experience that will give you the product you need. Be it still photography, video, or drone photography or video, you'll be amazed at the results they provide. Again, that's the Lock Lore Production Group. Contact details are in the show notes. Give them a call today at 864-245-1956. Now, since you only have six rounds of ammo, or five or seven, depending on the gun, you just have to problem solve a little better carrying a revolver. Back in the old days in 1987, when I first got into law enforcement, we were constrained to carrying revolvers. Now, going through the academy, I qualified with my department issue Smith & Wesson Model 10, as well as my personally owned Smith & Wesson Model 19 and Smith & Wesson Model 459. Now, my plan was to carry the auto on duty, but no plan surviving first contact Department Administration vetoed the auto with you'll shoot yourself with it as their reason. Now apparently the chief at the time had seen the movie A Christmas Story and determined that if Ralphie could shoot his eye out, the department's officers were just as capable of inflicting self-harm. There was one officer on the department that carried a 1911. However, he had been with the department for more years than I had on earth at the time, and was considered borderline crazy, so he got a pass. So I carried the Model 19 and was always cognizant of the fact that I needed to pay attention to what I was doing. I practiced accordingly, using those six rounds to best advantage, and getting to the point where using a speed loader wasn't much slower than changing magazines. Now revolvers, with their thicker profiles, aren't as easy to conceal as an auto. However, with the proper holster and clothing, it doesn't take much effort to hide a full-size revolver. And actually, in my experience, it's easier to hide a full-size revolver than it is a snubby. I've carried both in belt holsters, and the bigger guns balance better in an inside-the-waistband holster than the little ones. Now, making the gun disappear is one thing. Hiding the reloads was another animal altogether. I took to carry in three speed loaders and Bianchi speed loader holders that placed three rounds behind my belt and three in front. This greatly reduced the printing of the speed loaders. I also carried two Bianchi speed strips in my pocket. These were completely unnoticeable and gave me the option of reloading the entire cylinder two rounds at a time or just replacing the fired rounds to get a fully charged gun back in the fight. Now, revolvers must have something going for them, or nobody would still be making them. According to research conducted by Zipia.com, there were 581,000 revolvers manufactured in America in 2019. Manufacturers aren't going to produce firearms that no one buys. And while the number of manufacturers has dropped sharply, there are still quality revolvers to be had. Now, Colt hadn't produced a revolver for a good many years. The company that gave us the first viable revolver and then moved on to give us guns like the Trooper, the Python, and Detective Special went on to produce only 1911 semi-autos for years. And Colt, a few years back, realizing that there was in fact a demand for the wheel gun, reintroduced a number of their classics. Smith & Wesson, who jumped into the revolver game with their Model 1 in 1857, has continuously produced revolvers, and in doing so now dominate the marketplace. So who is still buying revolvers? Well, there's a pretty fair number of handgun hunters still putting meat on the table with them. A check of a cop's ankle may reveal a Smith & Wesson chief special. Beginning shooters buy them because they're simple to operate. Older shooters, who no longer have the strength to manipulate a slide, backed by a 20-pound recoil spring, snapped them up. When training beginning shooters, I actually prefer that they have a revolver. It's painfully obvious that a revolver is clear and unloaded when the cylinder is swung out and you can see into the chambers. The manual arms is simple enough that children can catch on pretty quickly, 
and a long, heavy trigger pull reduces the chance of a negligent discharge. I also have a fair number of revolvers come through my concealed carry class, and while the revolver shooting demographic generally consists of older shooters and women, I still see some of the younger crowd coming through with them. The younger folks' reasons are usually cost, ease of operation, and less maintenance as compared to a semi-automatic. Revolvers are also inherently reliable. This is not to say that they don't break on occasion, leaving you with a short, ineffective club to continue in the gunfight with horribly reduced odds of survival. When a revolver does break, it's not a simple fix. With the semi-automatic, you can perform an immediate action drill and usually get the gun back in the fight. But when a revolver does break, we look at the poor soul that had such absurdly bad luck that we can only assume they broke a bunch of mirrors over an Indian barrel ground. Revolvers are considered that reliable. Now mission drives the gear. When I was in law enforcement, even after my agency went to semi-automatics, I still carried a chief special in an ankle holster as a backup gun. Something about subjecting a semi-auto to the environment an ankle gun exists in just didn't set right with me. I did take comfort in the fact that should it come down to it, that little 38 would work. My wife's a concealed carrier, and on the rare occasions when she purse carries, she has a Smith 642 tucked in the purse holster. With the shrouded hammer, she doesn't even have to remove the gun from the purse to fire it, and she'd be able to fire all five rounds without issue. That's something you just can't do with a semi-automatic. If you go to an IDPA, USPSA, or Steel Challenge match, you'll find revolvers. Steel Challenge matches are ideal for the revolver shooter, as each stage consists of five targets. And extra rounds really don't do you a lot of good, as a miss on a stage eats up time. Metallic silhouette matches? Never seen an auto use there. Now, competing with a revolver is my personal preference. While I shoot both revolvers and semi-automatics, there's just something about going head-to-head -head with someone shooting a high-capacity gun that really gets me focused, and beating them is a real side benefit. And I know if I was going to get serious about shooting bullseye matches, I'd hunt up a tuned 5-inch barrel Smith 686 and be a happy camper. Now, this is not to say the revolver is the ideal weapon for every situation, but in some, they really shine. For instance, if you decide a good idea is to go for a hike and enjoy nature in the same stomping grounds as grizzly and Kodiak bears, having a large caliber revolver may come in pretty handy. And while there are large caliber semi-automatics on the market, should you have to dissuade a 10-foot tall, 1,500-pound critter intent on feasting on fresh human pancreas, well, something like a 500 Magnum may let you get home tonight. So while the many revolvers have gone the way of the T-Rex, there is still a viable market for the round gun. If you liked what you heard here, go ahead and subscribe to our podcast. We're on all the podcast directories, or you can listen in on our website. If you know someone who would like to hear what we have to say, let them know about this. Have a safe, healthy, and prosperous 2023.